Kendall King has battled all season long, and to be honest, this dude has led the Cubs to an unreal mark. We're 57 and 32. Kendall's batting over 340, almost 100 RBIs, and over 35 home runs at the All Star break. Yeah, this guy just might be the front runner for the MVP, and let's check up in on those stats really quick. So, in the National League, the MVP race is not even close. Kendall has a 342 average, as I mentioned, 36 homers and 98 RBIs. He is leading that, but Brandon Belt actually is showing a lot of power on his own. This dude has 27 homers, 76 RBIs, and a 318 average. In my opinion, he's having a career year, but look at Anthony Rizzo. 292 average, 18 homers, and 72 RBIs. Yes, Kendall is leaps and bounds beyond him at this point in terms of numbers and overall statistics, but Anthony Rizzo's having a pretty decent first half of the season as well. The Cubs have been red hot the entire first half of the season. 57 and 32 is their record with the six. 40 win percentage yeah that's that's pretty good oh and in case you miss it on the top right hand side of your screen they're the number one team in major league baseball right now but enough of all that it is time for the home run derby we've hit the halfway point of the season kendall's gonna battle brandon belt juan calderon john carlos stan freddie freeman mike trout eric yamamoto and eric hosmer today in the home run derby and our first opponent here in the very first round is eric hosmer he's the eight seed he had 10 home runs which isn't all that bad but i gotta imagine that kendall can definitely hit 11 easily and here comes the goat 458 career home runs. This dude has just been on a tear throughout his entire career. He might hit 500 home runs this season or maybe next season. And let the battle begin. Kendall's first swing is a um, a tripler down the left field line. He's going to rear back and Kendall gets a hold of one. This was deep back to left field. I think that one's pretty safe to say. It is going and out of this ballpark. Oh yeah, 448 feet on that monster. We only need one more home run over 440 feet to get an extra 30 seconds. Still nine home runs down. Kendall gets a hold of one, and that one is a moonshot. It's pretty high. It's going deep, but I think that one's going to tail off before it gets to the fence. It's going to be close, and okay, I'm wrong. It actually goes out of the ballpark. Two home runs in his radar. Kendall rips another one to deep left field. This one is a moonshot. That's going in the upper deck. you got to be kidding me. Okay, um, that one might have actually went out of the ballpark. So down seven home runs, nearing the halfway point. Kendall goes to deep center field. He says, look, I've hit him to left field. I've hit him to left center. I might as well work my way around the ballpark. He's going around the world today with a shot to center field. Now six home runs down. Kendall hits a power swing. And oh boy, that one, that's a souvenir for somebody deep in left field. That's an easy one. We'll take that. Four home runs left. Kendall's going to try to rip one. That is a moonshot. You have got to be kidding me. This one's going way back, back, back. Oh my God. 450 feet. That might be the highest 450 foot home run of all time. Now another one here from Kendall. He's on that tear. How many has he hit in a row? This is going to be close. It's getting close to the fence. It's slowing up a little bit. The fans are right there. And that one is back over the wall again. Two home runs away from tying Eric Hosmer and making sure we advance to the second round. And oh boy. Go ahead and put the ninth one on the board, ladies and gentlemen, because that one, that one's deep and it's absolutely gone. Now with just over a minute left, we need one more to tie Eric Hosmer, and I think that one's pretty safe to say that one is going to be number 10. So here we go. A minute left. We've tied Mr. Hosmer. We have an extra 30 seconds after that. All we got to do is hit one, and we're going to go into the next round. And this one's going to be close as a power swing. It's high and tight in on Kendall, and that one is going to clear the fence. So ladies and gentlemen, your boy Kendall King will advance to the next round. What a showing by Kendall. So Freddie Freeman and Giancarlo Stanton had a pretty close battle in the bottom half of the bracket, but Giancarlo Stanton moves, so he has 10 home runs in his round. On the right-hand side of the bracket, Mike Trout beats Calderon, Eric Yamamoto beats Brandon Belt. So we're going to be off here to see if we can beat Mr. Stanton, Mr. Home Run himself. Now here's Kendall, 11 home runs in the first round, 496 feet. With Giancarlo Stanton hitting 10, we got to do at least 11 if we want to advance. The crazy thing about Kendall King's home run career is that every time he's gotten to the home run derby, I think he's actually won. Let me know in the comments below, has Kendall King actually lost the home run derby? A little trivia for you guys. I want to know if you guys have watched his entire career or not. Has he won all of them? Has he lost one? Has he never won one at all? I want to know what you guys think if you've been watching this career. Now Kendall versus another one to deep left center field and that one. Oh yeah, that's a deep souvenir over 500 feet on that home run by Kendall. Now Kendall's going to hit one again deep and low. He's going to try to rip that one. And yeah, that's another souvenir going back to the balcony. 379 feet. Looked a lot more deep if you ask me. And the next cut Kendall's going to take is a line drive to left field. This one could actually get out of the ballpark. And it does. And just squeaks out at 410 feet. Now Kendall's going to go for another one to left field again. If this dude likes any section of the ballpark, it is absolutely left field. He is not laid on a single pitch here, which, to be honest, is kind of hard to be laid on the ball in the home run derby because the balls are thrown so slow. And this one's going to be close. It's getting pretty slow as it goes back to the fence. I don't know if it has enough juice to get out of the ballpark. And believe it or not, it actually does. So three home runs away at the halfway point of tying Giancarlo Stanton. And I think 
We might just be two away now as Kendall rips another one to left field. That one is 460 feet. Getting two more home runs. Kendall again hits a knuckler. It's going to go to left field. I think that one's got enough to carry out too. Probably about 400 and maybe 50 feet. 463 on that one. And the crazy thing is Kendall's actually done pretty well in St. Louis's ballpark. And I think he's showing you here in the home run derby that, yeah, he'd like to play here a lot more, especially if he's hitting balls like this. This is his rival now. He plays with the Chicago Cubs. So the Cardinals are a team that he wants to hit plenty of home runs against. And now Kendall has 10 home runs. He needs one more to tie. This one's going to be way up in the air, but I don't think that one quite has enough to carry out of the ballpark. And we still have a 30 second bonus if we don't hit any here in the last minute, but Kendall's going to hit one high and tight in on him. Probably should not have swung at that one. It's going to be close. Could it squeak out here? The fans are going up, and that one is out of the ballpark to give him number 11. Back to back rounds where he hits 11 home runs, and he's moving on to the finals. So going into the finals, it's Kendall King versus Mike Trout, two of the best young players in the majors right now. Yamamoto lost by just a single home run to Mike Trout, and Mike Trout comes in and hits 11. Kendall's hit 11 in pretty much every round, but now he's got to hit at least 12. So here we go, 11 home runs in the first, 11 home runs in the second, 504 feet in the second round was his longest home run. What can he do? He's been sitting down for a while. Those TV timeouts have been hurting him. Let's see if he can put on another display right now. And Mike Trout's got to feel pretty good. 11 home runs in the final round is usually a pretty good number, but when you got Kendall King, one of the greatest home run hitters of all time, swinging the bat, you might be in danger, Mike Trout. And that first one clears the fence pretty easy. The second pitch is going to come in, and again, left field. If you're sitting in a home run derby when Kendall King's participating, just sit somewhere in left field, left center field, and you got at least about 10 or so pitches you can get every single round that just might be a souvenir for you. Now, he already has two. He's going to try and get his third one here, but this one is going to be pretty shallow. Not going to carry out of the ballpark on that one. Now, with 3.15 left, Kendall's looking for another one's going to try to rip this one, and oh boy, I think that one's going to have enough to carry it out. He's already earned his 30-second bonus time, and this one's going to just squeak over the fence to make it 412 feet for his third of the ball game. Looking for another. Kendall's going to try to go to deep left center field again. This man cannot hit a home run in right field to save his life. Even when you think he's going to be late on one, he still hits it to left center field. Seven home runs to go. Kendall's going to rip one, and it's a moonshot to left field. If it's fair, it's going to be gone. It's going to be close, and this one literally hits off. Was that the pole or the fence? I have no idea, but still, another home run by Kendall, and he goes back for another one, and this one is ripped even harder to left center field over the bullpen, and that's going to be just inside the bullpen. For number six, he's hit a couple in a row now. Can he keep the momentum going? This one is unfortunately not going to keep it going. Four away from crossing the mark. Kendall goes for a power swing, and oh boy, that is crushed. It's going back to the balcony inside that staircase, and that one, so, that fan literally caught that one. That was the greatest catch I think I've ever seen so far in today's home run derby. 491 feet, and on the next one, he goes again with a power swing. 429 just over top of the pitcher's bullpen. Now, Kendall rips another one, but this one's going to be foul instead of a souvenir for somebody in the foul territory. Now, down to two home runs to tie Mike Trout to try and win another home run derby. He's going deep on this one. He's going back to the show sign. Can it just squeak over the fence? The fans are looking up. This one's going to carry just enough. I mean, that might be a foot or two over the fence. So, a minute 13. We need one home run to tie. Kendall rips one, and oh boy, that is gone. 11th of the ball game. Kendall is absolutely on a tear right now. 461 feet. The next swing could make Kendall King the home run derby champion, and this one's going to be close. It's going to be ripped to left center field. I think it has enough. Cross your fingers. Cross your legs. Let them go, boys, because that is a home run number 12 of the home run derby. The most he's had in today's round or today's home run derby, everybody's bowing down to him. Look, believe, it, believe what you need to. Kendall King is the greatest home run hitter of all time. Yes, he only has 458 home runs so far, but sooner or later, I think he might break that all-time record. So there you have it. The home run derby champion again. Kendall King has won it so many times and lose account of how many times he's actually done it. But the big test is now we got to go to the All-Star game. We got to prove that we can dominate there. Let's see what we can do. Fresh off of winning the home run derby, Kendall King is out there bragging just a little bit because he's like, look, I'm coming for all of you. I hit the home run derby. I won that. I'm going to hit the All-Star game today, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to dominate that as well. So so we head to Bush Stadium today for the All-Star Game. Kendall's feeling pretty good because just a couple of nights ago, he won the home run derby with the 504-foot home run. Got to feel pretty confident he can do just as well in today's All-Star Game. So today, the starter is going to be Joel Cortez versus Michael Walker. Both of these guys are pretty good. Walker's 8-4, but Cortez is 11-2. ERAs are pretty similar. Case for 9 are pretty similar as well. So the AO All-Stars are going to have Tejera, Salazar, Mike Trout, Will Myers. Of course, Will Myers is there. Josh Harrison, Kipnis, Zambrano, Danny Santana, and Tom Nassau. Not a bad lineup for them on the AO side. Again, Michael Walker pitching 8-4, 2.14 ERA, which is a laser-tight ERA. He's had a pretty monster season. So here comes the man with the plan. 342 average, 36 homers, just shy of 100 RBIs, and almost 30 steals in the very beginning of the season. This dude is on fire. 
So we got a lefty we're going up against today. That was going to be low. Kendall rips it to shortstop. And yeah, that's going to be a little bit of an anticlimactic way to start the game because that's going to be an easy ground down. So Mr. Zambrano's up. He's had a decent first half of the year, just under 300. Single digit home runs, 30 or so RBIs. Nowhere near Kendall's stats, though. So they have a runner on second, two outs. Still a 0 0 ball game here in the top of the second. Ball's going to go in. And oh, yeah, easy, uh, easy fly ball. We can end the inning literally with our eyes closed on this one. Imagine this. I'm closing my eyes, and we caught that one. All right, here comes Kendall. That first at bat was just unfortunate. We swung at the first pitch. Was a good outcome. Let's make things a little bit better here in our second at bat. All right, so we got another lefty on the mound right now. Bottom of the four. Still a, sto a scoreless ball game. First pitch is a two seam fastball outside we lay off of. So if the 2-0 count is the hitter's count in our favor, we're going to go with the power swing here, and oh boy, we crushed it. Unfortunately, it was in foul territory, though. Next up on a 2-1 count, Kendall's going to hit it in. Okay, a CNI single goes right at the middle, right past the second baseman, and we're going to get on base. Now we can show off our speed and go for a stolen base, too. Brandon Belt, he's had a heck of a season. Again, this guy is just behind us in the MVP race. Let's show him why we're the MVP and he's not. So lefty on the mound, we're going to lean a little bit to the right-hand side. If he goes to pick us off, we're probably screwed. I'm going to go for the steal. I think we got a pretty good jump there. Bell's going to hit one. That's a little close to the right fielder. Nope, Salazar's going to get it. No, 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 go back. Go back, Kendall. Go back. Oh, we're in trouble. We might get thrown out pretty easily. That's uh, that's not how an MVP should run bases. So here in the field, there's a runner on first base. It's a 2-2 count, top of the fifth, with uh, a 0-0 ball game still. Oh, Kipnis is going to run. This ball goes to the first base. It's going to go in the hole. Kipnis moves to second base. Clean. Oh, he's going to actually go to third base. It might be a play at third base. It's going to be close. And Kipnis with the heads up base running gets into third base. Smart play all around there by Kipnis. So Jason Kipnis is back up. Again, you guys saw that heads up base running from him. That's how the AO ended up getting on the scoreboard. This ball is going to be hit to Kendall. We're going to try to get it cleanly over to first base. Can we end the inning? Of course we can. Look at that strong throw by Kendall. Let's go to the dugout. A ground out earlier, a single later in the, in the fourth inning. Let's keep things progressing properly. Unfortunately, Hosmer couldn't get on base when he was up earlier. Here in the bottom of the 6-0, it's a 1-0 lead for the AL. We got to change this and change it quick. And we crush that change up just again in foul territory. A nice souvenir for somebody sitting out on the left field wall. Now the count is all even up at 2-2. And it's going to be a full count now. Okay. All right, here we go. Full count. Got to protect that plate. And I think we might have got one. That was deep left center field. Please don't catch this one. Get out of the ballpark. I think we got one. Yes, we do. Kendall gets a homer here in the All-Star game. He won the home run derby, and he just tied things up in the All-Star game. Where I think if he gets something here and we win the ball game, we could actually be the All-Star game MVP and the home run derby MVP. Something that rarely, if ever, actually happens. So here in the field, the AO has a 3-2 lead now. We we're trying to get that guy going back at second base. Instead, they ripped a little bit of the chopper. We're going to hold him. Oh, Kendall drops it. Kendall's going to try to field it. What is going on? This might be the greatest play ever. They said he's safe. That was almost the greatest play ever. Kendall bobbled it off his body and almost gunned him out. What a freaking play. Look at this. Take a look at the replay. The ball goes here to Kendall. goes a backhand. It hits him off his back. He turns, catches it, throws it off balance here. Generates all that arm strength. I think that guy was actually out. That should be a challenge play if you ask me. That guy looked like he was out. Let me know in the comments below. Was he safe or was he out? So here were two runners on. No outs. They got Kipnis up at bat. Kipnis rips one to first base. Oh, a great stop there. We're going to try and get the play. Second base. We're going to first. We flip it. And we got the double play. A heads up play there by Eric Hosmer. Kendall covers the bag and gets the out. Kipnis just got robbed of a crazy hit by Hosmer. And unfortunately, it looks like Stephen Godwin is going to pinch it for Kendall King. We had a heck of a ball game, but it's up to the rest of the National League to try and win this ball game for us. And would you look at that, the American League is unfortunately going to walk out of here with a double. Still, Kendall, his first event wasn't great, but then he got a single, then he got a home run. He even tied the ball game up early for the team and made a heck of a play in the field, but it just wasn't enough to win the All-Star game. 